Welcome, boys and girls, to KSP 1.10, the latest and greatest iteration of Kerbal Space Program scheduled to lithobrake onto your systems on the 1st of July. The developers have collaborated with the European Space Agency to bring forth some brand new parts, brand new suits, brand new missions, brand new contracts, and brand new celestial objects. I have been given super special sneak preview access to the update, and today, I'm going to run you through the most exciting and most notable changes contained therein. Starting out where most missions begin, the vehicle assembly building, we can take a peek at some of the new pieces that we have to play with. We've got two new probe cores, we've got the MPO probe right here which contains some nice liquid fuel and oxidizer on board as well as the MTM stage which contains some xenon gas and electric charge to make a nice ion probe if you want to. Now, these components are based on a couple of the parts on the ESA's Bepi Colombo mission, which is currently en route to Mercury. Um, but it's all well and good looking, the part, right? You know, it would be nice if we could actually conduct the same research intended to be conducted by the ESA, which is to analyze Mercury's magnetic field and magnetosphere, among others. And so this update thoughtfully includes a new science experiment as well. Where is it? Here we are. The magnetometer boom. Proof that big things do indeed come in small packages. It starts at a mere 30 centimeters, but by extending it, we can get it to extend a whopping six meters. And this allows you to uh, analyze celestial magnetic fields, though I am told that the warranty is void if it's deployed in an atmosphere. Moving swiftly along, we have a new claw. This one is smaller in diameter to its bigger brother, making it more size appropriate for anyone wanting to recreate the Rosetta mission, in which the ESA landed a probe on a comet. We'll talk about this a little bit later on though. In addition to having a new size, the claw now sports this spicy new paint job, making it easier to match it up to your ship's aesthetics. And speaking of paint jobs, Moving along, we can see that the fairings have a much welcome upgrade to their base plate appearance, as well as getting some cool new colours, including this sleek silver variant. That's not all though, fairings can now be left open-ended. If I just build something out here. So we can just hold down left alt, and we can lift, leave it uncapped like that, allowing far greater flexibility when designing ships. Furthermore, they can now be set to not auto-expand, in the vehicle editor, making it far easier to add decals. Another new piece added with the update. Let's try and whack something on just there. Look at that. Beautiful. Now you can adorn your craft with a plethora of designs. And yes, you can have as many different flags as you want. It's not just locked to the mission flag, which is something I'm really stoked about because, you know, I've always liked giving like my ship's names and having a nameplate on the cockpit, which was always a bit of a shame because it meant that the actual mission flag had to be the nameplate as well. Not anymore. So we have all the pieces. Let's get into space. Of course, if we're really trying to be faithful to recreating ESA missions, then we really need a rocket that looks the part as well, as in, you know, bears a little bit more resemblance to the Ariane 5 rocket than we're currently able to achieve. Luckily, this update has you covered there too. The 2.5 meter tanks, except for the biggest one, now can be recolored to more closely match the appearance of the Ariane 5's aesthetic. Look at that, beautiful. And if I try and find the Kickback SRB, there we are, we can see that this also comes with a trendy new alternate colour scheme, again to match the look of the ones found on the Ariane 5. As well as these two parts, the Poodle engine has also been given an alternate skin, a single bell variant that looks a lot closer in appearance to the Ariane 5's upper stage engine than any other stock KSB engine has so far. Once you've constructed your rocket, it's about time to choose some crew members, but not only can you just choose what suit of three they can wear. You can also customize the suits to a far greater extent than you could before. We've got some cool alternate color schemes for all of the suits from the stock game, Making History DLC, and of course, the Breaking Ground DLC as well. If you want to fly the Ariane 5 on any of the ESA missions, then while you can just do it yourself, there are some pre-made missions that come with this update. And yes, they do come even if you don't have the Making History DLC pack. And these let you follow in the footsteps of the ESA on two missions, one to visit Moho and one to visit a comet. And yes, you heard me correctly, KSP now has comets. Now mechanically, these work similarly to how asteroids act, but unlike asteroids, these look much cooler, and on re-entry, they can actually explode into smaller fragments while entering a celestial body's atmosphere, which is quite cool. And speaking of celestial bodies, meanwhile on Leith, the ground is looking far less uh, terrible. 
Yes, Lath is the latest recipient of the HD texture treatment, and I must say it's looking far more fabulous now. And yes, this does mean I will revisit my series Life on Lath at some point, worry not, dear viewers, but let's just sit back and look towards the skies from Lath for a second, and we can see the Jewel has a new animated shader and high resolution texture to boot as well. Never looked so great. Anyway, that's my little overview of all of the coolest stuff coming with this update, and I very much look forward to hearing what you all think about it as well once it officially launches in July. The Shared Horizons update does include a few other improvements and bug fixes, pause now if you're curious, but the stuff I've shown here is what I think people are going to be the most excited about. I know this video has been brief, and that's because I'd like to do a bit more justice for things like the Comet and the Bepi Colombo components, and so you can expect me to cover these in a lot more detail in their own dedicated videos, which I hope to get done at some point in the very near future. Why not? Why not subscribe and ring that bell? Is that something that people still say? Uh, to make sure that you don't miss out when they roll around. And hey, why not give this video a little old like if it was informative? Anyway, that's it from me. There are things on screen that you might also enjoy, but otherwise, I will simply see you on the next Kerbal Adventure. Goodbye. It's awkward now, because the video's not actually over. Hope you're doing alright. Hope you've had some nice dinner. I've got pot noodle waiting for me. That's my, that's my Friday night.